what goes around comes around. We're going to talk about both Brett Carroll and Emerson Mandel's commitments. And then we're going to talk about Coach PJ Flex's preferred play style. I think we could see something a little bit different heading into this 2023 season. Okay, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You are listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you, and we're talking about them all the time, nonstop. By the time we hit July, it will be back to every day, your show every day, and that will be Monday through Friday, five days a week, Gopher Talk, so you're definitely going to want to hit subscribe over on YouTube. Be sure to follow wherever you get the podcast at Locked on Golden Gophers, and be sure to join the community. We've got some great comments coming through. Anytime we talk about Nebraska or Wisconsin, those shows seem to go viral in the comments with a bunch of fans that get up in their feelings, but I'm here for it. But today we are talking about a couple commitments from Gophers targets, and then we're going to talk about Coach PJ Flex preferred play style. We're going to dive in deep because I did some more research. I've recently appeared on Fox 9 Sports now with Ahmad Hicks, and that was great. It was a good time. It was fun, but it got me thinking to what Coach PJ Flex preferred play style is and maybe what has shaped it over these years on why we haven't been able to get towards it in the last few handful of seasons. So definitely tap in, but let's talk about these commitments first. Now there's two guys that made their decisions over the weekend or over the long weekend, over the holiday weekend and whatnot. And we know more information about him. Now, one of them luckily is going to be a gopher, and that is Brett Carroll. Now, he committed to the Gophers. He's likely going to play center. Uh, he'd kind of been honed in. The Gophers wanted to look at him as a center, and he officially ended up committing over the long weekend. He knows what he was looking for, plain and simple. When he was when he was in his recruitment period, he was very specific on looking for knowledge of the play style looking for the preferred style and how they're going to develop him and he was more honed in on those elements as opposed to the the uh swaying aspects of things the the wine and ding, whining and dining aspects of things even though these kids aren't there aren't out there drinking you know they aren't out there drinking but the whining and dining of look at what we have to offer you look at all these nfl players that have come from our program look at how we work with offensive linemen now he wanted to know the elements of how they work with it but it was all about how is he going to get better with that program what is the style of play how do they how do they shape their offense? What do they do in certain situations? That is what Brett Carroll wanted to know. And that's why it is awesome to hear that he chose Minnesota because those elements and how he can see himself developed in the future felt like the best fit here in Minnesota. Now, you're talking about a player that was in the heart of the Big 12, a guy who is from Kansas, had a huge interest from Kansas State, had offer from there, had Iowa State in his considerations, had uh, Oklahoma State in his visits and considerations, in the heart of it all. And he chose to come to the Big Ten with the Minnesota Gophers. Now, other teams in his list that he took official visits to as well were Illinois and Texas Tech. So there were a lot of high-quality Power 5 programs in his list of considerations, but Minnesota walks away the winner. Now, like I said, he's likely probably going to be the center of the future for the Gophers. They don't really have a ton of youth at that center position. If you paid attention this spring, in the practices and whatnot, there were only three players that really got center snaps over the course of the spring, and that was Nathan Bow, who was in his final year of eligibility, Carter Shaw, who was in his final year of eligibility, and Cade McConnell. Cade McConnell. Um, so I think overall, he is going to have an opportunity, to say the least, to make an impact or make some noise or put his name in the conversation when it comes to 
the center position in 2024 because there will only be one player who have, who has really practiced at that center position in any capacity over the last year that will still be on the roster. So that should be a welcome uh, option for the Gophers, having something young, having someone to develop something similar to John Michael Schmitz. In fact, Coach Fleck told Brett Carroll, you remind me of John Michael Schmitz and how he was built and how he came in as a true freshman and how he was set, but what he needed to work on. And so, you know, that would be music to the ears of any prospect to hear that they remind them of a draft pick. Could that be some schmoozing? Maybe, but I genuinely feel like it was probably more honest than schmoozing as the Gophers need a center and they are more particular about how they approach recruits and who they recruit and how they recruit them and what they are looking for from specific prospects from specific roles you see that in the transfer when they enter the transfer portal as well when they go in to look for a transfer prospect they are very particular about who they pull out of the portal because they need them to fit the style of play to fit the culture and to be able to do what is asked to come out and get immediate production they are very intentional with how they do those things. I think they were intentional with Brett Carroll, and it is awesome to see him commit. But he wasn't the only player to make a commitment that was being targeted by the Gophers over the long weekend. Emerson Mandel, the number one offensive lineman in the state of Minnesota, made his decision, and he chose the Wisconsin Badgers. Now, Gophers fans, I told you on this show, when we got Nathan Roy, I said, look, be careful about the taunting. Be careful about the rubbing it in their faces, putting their noses in that fact because they could return around and return the favor with Emerson Mandel, who was considering the Gophers and Wisconsin. And I just told you, my gut says he could end up a Badger. And I felt like that was a way it was leaning. Now, as things kept going, I was like, okay, man, maybe Minnesota is really in this race. But he ended up choosing the Wisconsin Badgers. Now it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting development in my opinion, just because that offensive line and the style of play that they're going to be going into with Phil Longo's offense is going to be a lot different than the Badgers of years past. Now, how does that affect or change the opportunity to get to the NFL level that the Gophers and the Badgers have done over the years for so long now? That's yet to be seen, but if it was me, I'd probably stay home and I'd probably stay with the one that has the same O-line coach, the same offensive system, or the same style of play that I've seen get guys to the NFL. But he did what he did, and that's on that's on him. That's up to him. We'll see him twice, uh, or we'll see him once every single season for his four years of football, and hopefully that ax will be staying here as well. So, I mean, at least you probably got to touch it on your on your views through when you came through and did your official visits and whatnot, but that might be the last time, Emerson. I'm sorry to say it, but I would say best of luck, but it's to the Badgers. Usually I say I always root for these guys, no matter what schools they go to, as long as it's not the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, I can't do it this time, but that's where we find out with the prospects that have been on these last few visits. We've gotten answers from a lot of them. Brett Carroll comes to the Gophers. Emerson Mandel goes to Wisconsin. Mason Carter, the edge from Florida, ended up committing to Vanderbilt. Wyatt Gilmore, the edge from Minnesota, ended up going to Oklahoma. And then Caleb Pye from the offensive tackle from Nebraska ended up going to Illinois. That one caught me by surprise. I thought he was going to stay home, but that's where we're at right now. So the last couple names that took visits that are still kind of on the radar for the Gophers, uh, Jonathan Bibbs, a wide receiver from Alabama, who will look to earn an offer later this month as he camps in Minnesota. And then you've got JT Bronow, who is a running back. I don't know if we'll see him commit to the Gophers just because they already have two backs in this class, plus a bunch of youth on the team from the last couple classes as well at the running back position. So Jonathan Bibbs, but then the focus kind of turns towards keeping our guys happy, committed, and staying here with the Golden Gophers. There have been some whispers of certain players potentially having a look elsewhere, one in specific, but we'll get to that on another show this week. But I want to talk about PJ Flex preferred play style because a lot of folks are like, well, we just run the ball. We always like to run the ball. We have a new quarterback, but we run the ball. You're not wrong. Coach Fleck does like to run the ball, but it is a lot different than what people would assume. I've got the numbers for you, and we're diving in deep coming up next. First, let's talk to you about our friends over at FanDuel. If you're trying to 
take a swing at some some MLB betting, then you should do it over at FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. So that means if you just bet $20, you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's a deal that you, that's just a steal. That's instantly 10 times your money up to $200. Why wouldn't you give it a shot? And it's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus you get paid instantly. All you gotta do is go to locked on, or sorry, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. Again, Major League Baseball is officially back, and you can take a swing on those bets over at FanDuel.com. All right, Gophers fans, thank you so much for listening to Locked On Golden Gophers and making sure you tap in each and every day. Like I said, later this week, we're going to talk about a recruit who has whispers that he could be maybe considering an offer elsewhere. We're going to talk about that later this week. We're going to do some more deep dives on the football team. And then in future in future weeks, at the end of this July, we're going to start our uh, depth chart deep dive. So we're going to go into each group, each position group, and break down who's on the roster, uh, who is maybe wearing the pro- projected depth chart, as well as youth that is developing in that group and where they stand in the Big Ten. So be sure to subscribe so you do not miss any of that goodness, but let's jump into PJ Flex preferred style of play because I think the preference that coach Fleck wants to get to is what we saw in 2019. Now, some people might say, well, that's obvious. That was our best season. So of course he wants to get back to that style, but it goes beyond that because they ran the ball about 60% of the time and passed the ball about 40% of the time. It was actually like 61.6 in that 2019 season for running. And so when you look at that, I was like, okay, that's interesting. It's not as high as what we've been seeing these last couple of years, where last year was close to 70% running the ball. And the year, or two years ago, it was close to 70%. Last year, it was about 67, 68% where we ran the ball. Now that's 8% difference. You might be thinking that's not that big of a deal, but it is. That is an extremely big amount of swing in run attempts. And if you if you look at what Coach Fleck has done in his years, not only with the Gophers, but also with Western Michigan, you'll see that the years where he has found the most success and had the the more upside or more breaking of exp- expectations and getting a higher win total than what people had anticipated, it typically comes with a team that has ran the ball between 58% and 62%. So 60% give or take 2% on the ground. That is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to Coach Fleck and the style of play it seems he prefers. If you look at his time with Western Michigan, his last three years, he was there four years, of course, year number one, he was trying to get things in flux still, uh, only won one game that season. But then you look at the next three years, eight wins, eight wins, and then a huge win season for them that got them to a New Year's Six Bowl. You look at that, in those last three years, he had at least he had a passer with at least three thousand passing yards in all three of those final seasons. They were productive on the air and on the ground. Now, in his time with the Minnesota Gophers, he's had one year so far where that passer has passed over three thousand yards, and it was in the 2019 11 win season. Now you look at 2014, 2015, 2016 over with Western Michigan, you're looking at a running back one who had in 2014, he had 1,551 yards, a running back two who had 735 yards and a running back three who had 492 yards. So they still got it done on the ground. They were still ground and pound, still moving the rock. But then you look to the quarterback who had 3,443 passing yards with 26 passing touchdowns, along with 264 rushing yards as a quarterback. And then the wide receiver one had 1,500 yards, and the next two options on the team in pass catching had 779 yards and 637 yards. So they got it done in the air and on the ground, uh, running back over 1,000, a receiver with over 1,000, a quarterback with over 3,000 yards. That is what you would love to see. That's balance in your attack. Then you move to 2015, and you're seeing something similar still. A running back with 1,051 yards, and then the next two running backs, 735 yards and 492 yards. So again, a good amount of production on the ground. But the quarterback had 3,522 yards with 29 passing touchdowns, 
and 107 yards rushing. Now you're seeing these quarterbacks are still getting a, a good amount of yards off the ground too. That threat to be able to run is huge. And then you look at the receiving options. Wide receiver one had 1,429 yards in 2015. The next two had 1,367 and 247. So two wide receivers cracking that 1K mark. Does that remind you of anything? Yes, the 2019 season. That balance, the threat of attacking. And finally, we look at 2016 in Western Michigan. The running back one had 1,353 rushing yards. The next running back had 923. So almost two rushers with over 1,000 yards on the ground, but still the quarterback with 3,533 pass yards, 33 passing touchdowns, and 249 yards rushing on the ground. You're seeing the trend here. You're seeing production in the pass game, production on the ground, and running from the quarterback. Now we're moving into this next season where we have the talent to get back to that type of style because you look at the 2019 season, you see Tanner Morgan with over 3,500 yards passing. You see two wide receivers crack that 1,000 yards, and then you see multiple running backs with some production on the ground. That's the exact type of preferred play style that the Gophers and Coach Flex specifically is looking for. We've only seen that in the one year in 2019, and it was the most successful year by far. And when you look at the talent in the rooms, you look at Ethan Kaliak Manis as the quarterback, and you can see those type of numbers on the cusp. You can see the potential there. You can see that he is a quarterback who can run the ball on the ground and get yardage if need be. It feels like everything since then, everything since that 2019 season, something has gone wrong. And rather than forcing the preferred play style, rather than being like, no, this is my system and this is how we do it, Coach Fleck has adjusted, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. He has leaned into the constants that help him get to wins. And those constants have been an All-American running back who forces missed tackles, time of possession battles, and really trying to hold the ball on your side for the most majority of amount of time and win that time of possession, and then defensive discipline and not turning the ball over, not giving up explosives, and keeping your team in it regardless of if that team goes down and scores, then you have the ball longer. You take long stretches, long drives, and you make it happen. See, with those adjustments, Coach Fleck was able to help Minnesota stay competitive in those games and walk away with some victories that maybe wouldn't have been able to if they had stuck to that preferred style. But the adjustments helped them continue to go on winning. Now, what went wrong to cause them a stray from the preferred style in the first place over the last three years? There's a number of things you talk about in 2020. You had the COVID season where you don't know if you're even going to play a season. Then you get a shortened off season, shortened preparation. You don't know if Rashad Bateman is coming back to your team, being your wide receiver number one. Then you head into 2021. You've got a wrong fit at offensive coordinator. Running back injuries absolutely decimate your room and your top three guys. Mo Ibrahim, the guy who was the Big Ten running back of the year the prior the year prior. The uh, Trey Potts, who came in and immediately gave you rock solid produ production after filling in for Mo, and then Bryce Williams all getting hurt in that season and you're running with two lead true freshman backs as well as not really having that capable number one wide receiver. You have Chris Simon Bell who has been going real nice and showing out, but nothing really behind him that has proven anything. So that's 2021. Then you head into 2022 last season. Your wide receiver two, Daniel Jackson, gets injured in the fall, delayed back, doesn't come back till about week three, week four, really without any restrictions. Then you head into one, two, and three, and in week three, your wide receiver one gets hurt for the rest of the season while your wide receiver two just got back on the field and is on a pitch count. So you're talking about that. Then you talk about the confidence of your slot wide receiver is just absolutely obliterated. Michael Brown Stevens was having a lot of struggles all year long, drops and just confidence, head hanging down. Plus your other talented receiver like Dalen Wright is just having issues with the coaches, with himself internally, like just a whole lot going awry in that wide receivers room. Then you add in a quarterback injury, your experienced quarterback, and the new one coming in has never had to be in that starting situation and has a whole lot to process, a whole lot to know, a whole lot to protect him as a coaching staff. And on top of that, 
that wasn't the intention. You talk about all those changes and it definitely shifts you away from the preferred style. Now you take that into account and you know that Minnesota walked away with two nine win seasons in that grouping. And I'm actually surprised when re-evaluating. And the thing is, Minnesota probably should have won the West reasonably, even with all of that going on. So if Minnesota can stay healthy and they can utilize this offense, the depth that they have, the talent that they have, and play that preferred style that they want to play, the style that Coach Fleck played in his back half of Western Michigan, the coach, the style that Coach played in 2019, if we can get to that with a healthy team and with the talent at hand, Minnesota should be in a good spot. Now we have the deepest wide receiver room that can handle injuries thrown at it. Depth and talent at the running back room with different skill sets and the most talented quarterback that Coach Fleck might have had in his entire head coaching career thus far. But what could this preferred play style mean for the Gophers and for the 2023 season? What could the hiccups be that prevent it? That's what we're going to dive into to close the show coming up next. All right, Gophers fans, I appreciate y'all for listening in, tuning in, hitting subscribe and all that. Let's talk about what the hiccups could be that present themselves in the 2023 season away from the preferred play style and what that play style could mean for us if we stick to it in that 23 year. Now, let's talk about it first. I mentioned on that Fox 9 Sports Now on Sunday that the passing attempts for the Gophers should tick up in this upcoming season. You look at the last two years, it has been a very... Very poor showing when it comes to passing attempts and getting the ball out there. If you always are running the ball, running the ball, and leaning on the run game, you're going to face more stacked boxes, which the Gophers did see a significant amount of these past couple seasons. But now you're talking about a quarterback that you have a lot of options in the wide receiver room. You have Brevin Spanford at the tight end. You can space and mix these guys, mix and mingle, mix and match. And you can find a way to see these passing attempts tick upwards. Now, last year, they had 21 attempts per game. That's pretty low in general. But the year prior to that, they had 19 attempts per game. Both of those are some of the league lows, some of the lowest in the country, only ahead of really the Armed Services Academies. And you've heard that stat before. But I would expect the Gophers to pass the ball more around that 27 to 30 range. That would be the most that the Gophers have passed the ball under P.J. Fleck per game, if they can get into that range. That also would be the pretty average in that Western Michigan play style that we had seen from them. So I think that is what the goal is. You look back to that 2019 season, they even had 26 attempts per game in that season. So I think we could see a slight tick up in passing attempts, especially not having such a all-American lead horse type running back from the jump in this upcoming season. Now, on top of that, there should be more coverage matchup uh, matchup advantages for the Gophers to try and take advantage of in this upcoming season. Not only do you have Chris Ahmed-Bell, who has given Big Ten defenses problems, you have Daniel Jackson, who started coming into his own and giving all sorts of defenses problems last year. you got Elijah Spencer, who could be one of the most talented, if not the most talented receiver in the room, in my opinion. Very, very durable, very uh, sure-handed, and also his release package off of the line of scrimmage. He sets it up so well. He always creates space on those slants. We saw it in the spring game. All of that, and then you still have Lamecki Brockington. You still have Christian Hoskins, who brings that speed element. You still have Brevin Span Ford, who is massive, can go up and win a jump ball, can still has the athleticism or the speed to hang around with some of those uh or to outrun a linebacker, but still bully a safety or a nickel that could cover him. All these different matchup advantages. If they put their best corners on the two out wide wide receivers who I could see being Elijah Spencer and Chris Hyman Bell, you've got Daniel Jackson in the slot. You've got Brevin Span Ford in line or potentially on the other slot. It is going to be, there's going to be some sort of matchup mismatch that you can always try to take advantage of. It should make Athens ability to read the field field quicker too because he can kind of identify the different matchups from the pre-snap as he gets going so there should be an advantage there where you should have someone who has at least the the upper hand in a one-on-one matchup now you move to zones and you can find some more openings with all of these weapons as well then on top of that you talk about more explosive plays could be at hand for the gophers deeper shots which is more to Ethan Kelly McManus's strengths um you 
could see more chunk plays. You could see longer passes. You could see running backs that can hit the home run. Sean Tyler, we've seen that ability from him in the past two years in the Mac where he is absolutely efficient and he gets over a thousand yards each of those years, but he's doing it on like 17 attempts because he has the breakaway speed to make big dangerous plays. And on top of that, I'm not saying Mo didn't have that. I'm not saying Trey Potts didn't have that. But what I'm saying is you didn't see them finish the home run plays very often. I think you will see those finishes, not only from Sean Tyler, but also from Zach Evans, who we've seen flash that in spring games. This last spring game, he had a 75 yard touchdown and absolutely put Coleman Bryson on skates. So we have that big play ability, but with that explosive plays with that it stacks the box less. They have to play true to it. So it should give you a little bit more space, a little bit more wiggle room to help make those explosive plays. But on the flip side of that, with more explosive attempts, likely means more potential turnovers as well, more potential turnover plays. So a lot will be on Ethan Kelly McManus's shoulders to be himself and reap his talent but also to take care of the football, play smart, and know I can make that throw, but should I make that throw? How precise does it be? How much of a bat in a basket does that throw need to be? And when he is called upon to make that basket throw, he's got to hit it. So there's a lot of elements in there, but a lot of high potential as well, even with a difficult schedule. Now, the only things that I could see as hiccups to prevent this preferred play style, prevent the pass up or passing attempts going higher, prevent uh, more, more balance across the offense, the only hiccups I can see in this are two things. One, the offensive coordinator fit. Now, one wouldn't imagine this should be a huge issue because both of these guys have kind of grown internally, even though they're both co-offensive coordinators, but now they'll be the ones making the call so... We haven't seen that happen yet at a larger capacity. We've seen it in a bowl game, but that's about it. So the potential could be there where maybe it doesn't click how we wanted it to. That could be a hiccup. I don't anticipate it'll be too too fretful, but at the same time, it's a potentially hiccup. The second one is quarterback inexperience and depth. Now, you've got two guys that have gotten some field time. You've got Ethan Kalik Manis, all the upside in the world, has been on the field and played in games, started games now, but... He's still getting experience under his belt. Then you've got Cole Kramer. He's gotten some experience in game as well. He is a sure-handed backup, a steady backup, played really well in the spring game as well, has shown that he can be suffisable if your quarterback is having issues, if Ethan Kalikman struggles, if he gets injured. Cole Kramer should be a very suffisable backup, but... There still is a lot of inexperience. There isn't a whole lot of starts. There isn't a whole lot of in-game, on-the-fly adjustments with these guys. So that could be a potential hiccup. I don't don't know if it will be. I I don't imagine it will be. I think it'll be a learning experience, but I think both of them will give you good options to get you towards that play style that you prefer. But we're going to see what happens. That might be it, which is why I expect even with this difficult schedule, the Gophers play style should at least be one that Coach Fleck has shown to prefer. And hopefully that can lead to more wins that are unexpected for the Gophers in a difficult season. We're going to find out this year, like it or not, rain, rain or shine, ups or downs, we're going to find out in that 2023 year. But hopefully it is for a positive and we see the flashes, the glimpses to help get us to the promised land. That's going to do it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. I appreciate you taking the time and listening. Be sure to hit subscribe wherever you get the podcasts and over on YouTube. And that's going to do it. That is it. I will see you later this week. Row the boat, Sky Imago Gophers. And don't forget to subscribe.